this little five dollar bill is worth almost two thousand dollars wow. that I paid eight dollars for. Well, that's better than my ROAS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me to spend ten grand and get three hundred thousand dollars in in ROI in return is a pretty normal thing for me to see with a brand like that. It is well into the millions. Now I do want to touch real quick on that. All right, we must be in the right place. I see Kieran's M6, and here we are in Hayden's huge external garage, huge house here in the Phoenix area. So he's super excited about all the garage space, and we got a couple here. This is his new R8, and this is his GTR, 2009 GTR, full bolt-ons, this thing is crazy fast. We were on a rally this morning, he took this car, and it was a whole lot of fun. I took, I took the straight pipe 430, Kieran took the M6, and we had like 20 other Lambos, Ferraris, R8s, things like that. So Cool to see the two cars in person. The M4 and the Huracan would be here, but I think they're getting service, so they're not here right now. But next time he'll have all four cars in the garage, and uh, he says he's got a couple more that he's planning on buying too, so that's pretty crazy. But anyway, in we go. Here we go. All right, guys, well, look who I found. We got the man himself, Hayden Bowles, in the Costa de Hayden Bowles, and we got here and here. And what's crazy is we all live in Arizona now. Like looking back on the video we filmed nearly two years ago, it's just crazy to see all the things that have changed. Physically us, <laughs> I'm probably a foot taller now. I mean, he was in Minnesota, we were both in Virginia, and here we are in Arizona. This is just crazy. How is it? How's life been? I it's two never, years. It's literally been two years since <laughs> I've talked to you guys. So hello, I hope all has been well. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Yes. Um, JR Business Channel is amazing. Thank so, you, as of the Arizona situation, he knows this very well about me. I never expected to even come to the desert. I come here, I'm like, all right, whatever. It's, it's okay. Like, no tumbleweeds are rolling across the road. <laughs> I start slowly, like, exactly. building out a little social circle here, right? I, I live in California, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy. I grew up in Minnesota. You guys were in Virginia, and now I've lived in California since right. then. Now we're all in Arizona. Yep. Started coming out here, started looking at real estate. The taxes were very advantageous. Loved the real estate out yep. here. This is my first summer here. It's ridiculously hot. That's not a joke. Yeah, yeah. it is a lot. <laughs> the cars definitely don't like that, but um, it's been really fun. His YouTube channel. Guys, when we filmed that video, you maybe had 5,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers. Max. Look at him now at 142,000, I think we just checked. Thank and you. he posted all sorts of e-commerce videos. So we're about to hit on a ton of different industries and what we all do within the e-commerce realm. It's very different. Right. My brother and I, as you guys know, our main focus is eBay. We're shipping out physical items. Nothing's drop shipped, unfortunately. I mean, everything is physically touched. It takes a lot of time and effort to get those orders out the door, but uh, it really works out in the long run because we don't have as much competition. Barriers to entry are higher and uh, overall it works really well. How about you guys? See, I've never touched eBay except for when I sold my first GoPro when I was like 12 and I needed 40 bucks. Yeah. So that's the only experience I have on eBay. I've never even purchased anything off of there like as a consumer. Uh -huh. So for me, I operate in more of the Shopify side of things. Now Shopify is not really a subcategory of e-commerce. That is simply, and a lot of people get this confused, they're like, is Shopify dying? I'm like, Shopify is a hosting platform. Yeah. It's, it's not a type of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So mine started with drop shipping, which is what we talked about on the, the video video almost two years ago, which is yeah. crazy. So a lot of the products come from China or you know different countries of that nature. Um, nowadays, we'll be ordering them in bulk, usually with custom packaging or our logos for our brands put on them, and we will have that upfront cost of purchasing a thousand to 10,000 or more units of a product, and then it's shipped out much faster. Because similar to what you guys do, you know, you can get your products out, what, three, four, five, six days to your customers. Yeah, and it's smart. quick. When I was drop shipping, it takes a month for a customer to get their product because it's got to be made, that order's got to be packaged, sent to them from China, put on a boat in the cheapest route possible yeah. because at that point you're playing with, you know, kind of razor thin margins a little bit, a little bit. I've used things like Wix as well to host different, I've tested stuff, but Shopify is where I, you know, I just got very comfortable with building the websites and been able to build, you know, well over a dozen stores. Some I run to this day still, some I don't, they fluctuate in and out, but now I'm building two main e-commerce brands. So those are products where we, we hold products. I mean, one of them's on the shelf up there. We have a patent for that product. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that. That's a really important point. We do want to touch on that because I feel like the space, not that I do much drop shipping at all, but the face is becoming really crowded because of all these like yeah. YouTubers, everyone's getting in the, you want to stand out in some way. So your way of standing out is creating your actually own product and your own branding. Is and there's it. two routes that this happens. I mean, part of it's actually off of YouTube people in the e-commerce space, which I mean, so we, we know some of them who like, you know, they say they do e-commerce and you first got to ask yourself what even is e-commerce? It's just commerce, but online, the buying and selling of goods. Simple as that, yeah. So 
it's it's the whole online era, right? All the millennials with our tech gadgets and whatnot and cameras and fancy things. So I feel like a lot of people get a bad rep about e-commerce even as a whole, particularly because of dropshipping videos. Like people who claim to be that and, you know, kind of use the the hot topic to their advantage in a negative way. So that's something where I've always kind of tried to stay away from. Like, you know how I built my YouTube channel. All I did was post every single day for 600 days. Consistency. And that's it. And what did I post? People are like, oh, how'd you do all the videos? All I had to do was think about what I was struggling with or what questions I had when I was starting. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've been running the business for years, doing YouTube for almost two, oh. and it's been a, a lot of fun. So that's the, the yeah. niche that I operate. Love in. it. All right, Kieran, let's hear it. So yeah, and so for me, I own an agency, and so you guys probably remember, you know, probably like two years ago when social media marketing became really hot, and essentially the business model there is that you do social media for businesses and then they pay you a monthly retainer. Probably about seven, eight months ago, I started transitioning and working with a lot of e-commerce brands. I'm essentially like an e-commerce agency now. So my agency kind of uh, shifted a little bit in terms of the the clientele that I was focused on. And so this is another great way to get into e-commerce and to learn the ropes. Everything's trackable, right? If you think about it, you know, you bringing in, you know, new likes and followers for a business like that, none, none of that is is uh, ROI, none of that ROI is trackable and there's nothing that you can really show them like, hey, I got you a bunch of followers. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, running an agency model business, mm-hmm. running other people's e-commerce stores and running their Facebook ads, their Google ads, whatever it is, whatever product offering you're giving to them is a way to get into the e-commerce space and to, you know, play around with that and learn and learn the ropes. And you're not doing it with your own business. You're getting a reliable a monthly income and, and revenue stream from it. And on top of that, um, it's much, much easier to prove that you're getting results for these types of businesses. Yeah, that is one huge thing. He shows me all the time. You literally log in your Facebook back end. The, the yeah. ratios crazy ROAS, are yeah. insane. People ask me all the time, how am I getting 20, 30x ROAS on my Facebook ads? And it's very simple. It's because yeah. somebody else has been building this brand for the past 10 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I come in and I turn some Facebook ads on. Then people are going to convert higher already because they recognize, they know, like, and trust that brand. So my ads convert so much higher because I'm working with companies that have been branding themselves for the last 10, 15 years. And you're able to take their existing customers or people who at least know about them right. and quickly turn them in because they're already yes. familiar. Right. You're not reaching out to a cool person, exactly. which is cool. Boom. Yeah. So, so every month he's pulling in like millions of dollars for these companies. So these millions alone we add in to get that title of... It'd be yeah, many, we many, don't many even know the exact dollars. number. We don't right. talk. That's why we just said millions. But it is well into the millions. Now, I do want to touch real quick on the yeah. difference between revenue and profit. Yes. So I know I mentioned Please. when you were drop shipping. So when it comes to the drop shipping, I mentioned you're playing with interesting margins. From my yeah. own perspective, it's usually going to be anywhere from about 15% to 35%. Mm-hmm. I've had the occasional store at 40, right? Usually it's not going to last that long. Um, and it does fluctuate, right? It's e-commerce. It, it can, business goes up and down depending on if it's cyclical or seasonal. Yep. Okay. So it does yep. change. It's definitely been a, a fun game of the technical analysis. Yep. And, and unfortunately, I mean, not enough people understand that difference that he just outlined. You'll see it time and time again. These kids running around, these gurus, <laughs> just goes $2 million this year. Okay. What are your margins? Like, how much money are you making? <laughs> yeah, I made like two percent. Like, I made nothing. Like, like at the end of the day, you have to be making money. <laughs> I, I know people, and I'm not gonna ever name drop when someone really, really upsets me. But I know yep. people who will say I make a hundred thousand dollars a month with e-commerce. When in reality, every month by doing that number, they're losing five to ten grand, but they're making yes. it back up in course sales. And like that's exactly. What they're that is and that's what I mentioned cool. at the beginning of this video, which is why I brought it up in the first oh, place. Yes. I know people don't like to talk about that, but it's it's become like it's giving e-commerce a bad rep. Moving into the growth stages, the ways to really get going. I've made a couple of videos in the past on eBay in particular. And the key with eBay, um, because you're not doing the marketing per se, that's all eBay is doing. I mean, you're paying them a fee, of course, when you sell their product, but some of that goes toward marketing and their customer base. You're, you got millions of people on eBay. So it was like where he is paying to get in front of people and you're paying to get your ads and products. Yeah. Right, right, you're paying for those customers. On eBay, you're not, that, that's a big difference. So with eBay, you really have to maximize eBay SEO. I've talked about this in like, many, many previous eBay videos, getting your listings to the top of search results, generic search results. That is where it's going to pay off. Replenishable items, my cash cow listings that I talk about all the time. If you can get those to the top of search results and do everything right, title wise, picture wise, uh, subtitle, descriptions, happy customers, great reviews, everything like that, you're going to be unstoppable on eBay. And that's what we've become in the past few years. We've just had this huge snowball that just keeps rolling and getting bigger and bigger and bigger with these listings. So if you want to check out more of that, it'll be linked down below eBay SEO, but that, that's kind of the key 
for growth on eBay and it does take a little bit longer. Whereas with you, you can really kind of crank it up. Like with the ads, if something's working, you can just turn it up and yeah. let it rip. And just to point out like and, and bring up a revenue number as an example, I brought a new store with a new product, something I knew was already selling. I brought it from zero to $8,000 a day in revenue in nine days. That's kind of my quickest, and I know people who can do it a lot faster, and I know I can do it faster if I'm willing to have no margin or lose money. I had like five to 10% margin. The reason I did that is because it immediately gives me an influx of customers, yeah. email lists, and data on Facebook. So I'm willing to break even or make a very small amount of money, even lose money in the beginning, because it's building that pixel, which comes out of the Facebook ad, which is a totally different topic. Now, both has its pros and cons. Yep. You could step away from what you're doing besides like the order fulfillment, I mean, you don't have to do much on the marketing because it's there. I mean, it's you have to put in a lot of effort. I'm not going to discredit that to yeah. get it up there. Well, once it gets going, yeah, it's going to stay up there pretty well. Yeah, I don't have that. You know, if my ads get turned off, if let's say a crazy ex has my Facebook login and <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 hits all the blue buttons and turns off all my ads, you're screwed. They're yeah. gone. And with my business model, there's two types of scale, right? So there's your your clients and you, you know, the service delivery side of it, you scaling your clients e-commerce revenue and their ads, et cetera. And then there's your agency, which is actually your business because it doesn't matter how much I scale my clients' um, revenue and results, True. I get paid the same amount every single month, right? Yeah. Unless there's like a revenue split or deal, yeah. Which, yeah. which I do sometimes, but for the most part, it's it's a set um, you know, monthly retainer. So at the end of the day, there's two different types of ways that you need to make sure that you're scaling if you run an e-commerce agency, and that's number one, making sure that you're scaling your clients, making sure that their revenue is increasing yep. um, and, and that you're helping them and providing a good service. And then number two is your agency. You need to be taking care of yourself and your employees, right? So you need to make sure that you're prospecting and going out there and finding new clients that are going to come in and pay you um, so that your business grows. Because you know if you have an e-commerce agency and you're doing great for your clients, but you're not prospecting, then you know you make the same amount of money and your product, your service can be amazing amazing, but you're not going to make any more money unless you go out there and actively search for new clients. Yeah. So. Or obviously, I mean, I'm sure you've had the situation, I want to bring it up, where you can raise a retainer. That too, exactly. That's why it's like, it's not pointless to scale their company through your company. Yeah. And your company is scaling other people's companies. Exactly. And that's what your company does. Exactly. So, you know, if you help someone else make $100,000, but then you scale it to 500000 they're probably going to pay you more for that. Exactly. Or you can go to them and say, hey, I'm going to stop if I'm not getting paid more because we're doing so much more work. Right. It's, yeah. it's just value. You bring value, you get paid. There's a lot of brands out there that have been surviving since like the early like internet boom in the early 2000s. They've been surviving on SEO and Google ads and that's all they've been doing. So they've never touched Facebook or social media right. or anything. Right. And so, you know, when I come in with a, a really big brand that's already built up and we start running ads on a platform that they've never spent money on before, it's really easy, especially in the beginning stages to get crazy ROI. So yeah, like for me to spend 10 grand and get $300,000 in ROI and return um, is a pretty normal thing for me to see with a brand like that. Which is awesome because so, your clients are probably just through the roof exactly. excited yeah. about it, which is great. And that's one reason why I love the, the SMA business, um, or at least you know helping other companies grow their company. You're always going to be able to make money from that, but it's just something where by being able to bring that direct value, I mean, you can increase your income again on a consistent basis. Yep. Like you're getting paid monthly retainers. Right. And that's the thing. So you get to jump in and do that with not having to necessarily yeah. risk as much. And it's great. I, I know how much is coming in every month base. And then on top of the fact that you can upsell current clients, another thing too is you can use them as case studies. So I can walk into any business and be like, hey, look, look what we did for this client. And you know, that's another way that you can kind of leverage what you're doing to get to grow your business and get more clients. Right. So let me ask, you know, the Jerry Business Channel has a lot of younger viewers. Um, right. I'm sure they're all, you know, they're all like, oh, this all sounds great. Which one do they pick? On top of the I mean, fact that there's okay. more, there's yeah. more than these three business models, right? There's, there's a, a lot of ways. Like, okay. Yeah, well, one point on that. Um, I, I get it all the time. You know, I, I have no money, but like, where do I start? Like, okay, in the very early ages of what we were doing with eBay, this is very like Gary V type stuff. Go to the garage sales. Go to Goodwill. Go to the thrift stores. Go to your uncle's house. He's got a bunch of crap in his basement, and just take the stuff and throw it on eBay. So if you come across some weird, obscure thing, you wouldn't want to put that. You wouldn't want to go in and make a Shopify store, pay 50 bucks a month, and set everything up. Like no, you would just put that on eBay. So starting out, eBay is very beginner friendly. I always say this: like if you're not on eBay, you've never bought anything on eBay. I urge you guys, it's free. Make an account and just start buying little things on eBay and building up feedback points. If you buy a little teddy bear for a few dollars, you're gonna get a feedback point on that. Or if you buy something for $10,000, you're still gonna get one feedback point. 
So start buying a few things and building up the feedback because once you have a couple hundred feedbacks or you're in the hundreds, that looks really good when you go to start selling because someone's not gonna buy from you if you've got like one point or two points. But if you've got a couple hundred points or if you get into the thousands of points or like us, we have tens of thousands of positive feedback yeah. points. <laughs> They That's see crazy. that and they're like, okay, this dude's legit. I'm going to buy it from him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel really safe buying there. And flipping is a very easy way to start. To answer your question, yeah. eBay is very friendly for the flip game, I will say. But um, if they don't, if they're not interested in flipping or if they're interested in more of drop shipping, Shopify could be a really good way to go. Yeah. And you would want to check out the some videos. The thing is, if you're trying to sell a $2 product or a $5 watch that you found in your grandpa's basement, you don't want to go spend twenty nine dollars a month to open Shopify. Yeah, cheap. It makes sense. sense. Pay all. eBay twelve cents. It makes no sense because yeah. you only pay them once you sell it. Right? Exactly. I've listed exactly. stuff on eBay. Like when I sold that GoPro, I didn't yeah. know where else to sell it. I sold it there and I paid a fee. There you go. Once yeah. it sells. Yeah. So that's the thing. And, and to your point about like what I call social proof, right? Having a, a lot of your feedback yes. points and whatnot. Yes. It's similar yes. to what I do with the marketing, right? I'll be using the same ad creative on Facebook for all of my ad sets. And you know, if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. Yeah. But essentially you're scrolling on Instagram and boom, you come across a sponsored post that has, I mean, I've had ads within two months that have 18 million views, 80,000 comments, like actual Holy crazy cow. numbers. And guess what? Just because that starts piling on yeah, more people social. click, they're gonna be like, wait, it's just a snowball like you mentioned with yep, the business. Yep, so yep, yep, it yep. just grows and grows and grows. And then you have like one of the most legit looking ads, the most feedback, hopefully positive yeah. um, in that industry. So it's huge. For me, obviously, you know, I started my business with like a $15, like I bought business cards, I made my website for free, and that was pretty much it. it. At the end of the day, like the agency business, you know, these guys can sit behind their computers all day. They can be complete introverts. It, it really wouldn't matter. That's um, true. So yeah. for the agency game, a lot of it's relationships, yeah. right? So you have to be going out there shaking hands with business owners, going to networking events, things like that. So um, personality type plays a, plays a bit into what kind of e-commerce route yeah. that you might want to go down. Did but, I tell you about the first time I tried to do an in-person? Yeah, you talked about it in one of your I videos. I think I might yeah. have mentioned it oh, in the video. Did it not work out well? So I, I'm an introvert naturally. A lot of people don't know that. Like okay. I, I still yeah. prefer to like do my own thing. Um, when I was first starting, I was like 15, right. you know, someone in, in some ad somewhere with Lamborghini probably said something about SMM, I'm like that's genius. So yeah. I'm in Florida, right? I'm 15, I'm there with a friend and I was, I decided, I put on my one nice polo shirt at 15. I'm gonna do this. I'm, I'm gonna walk into this business, I'm gonna ask for the manager, I saw some video on how to pitch. Oh and so I, I did it, I started walking in and I realized I was about to walk in the door, I just curved around it and I was like, nope, sat on a bench out front of the restaurant for six hours in the sun before I made the decision to go. Literally, I kid you not, for six hours. Wow. And I got sunburned in the whole nine yards. Turns out the manager wasn't even there, it was too late, he'd already left. Like, oh. But regardless, I did eventually push myself to go in. I'll tell you, from an introvert perspective, that is the scariest thing oh, to yeah. face. Oh, and yeah. I didn't want to do it. So. I, I want to sit behind this thing right here. Yep. I've had this laptop for a little over a year. I want to sit behind that. Very true. So know your strengths. If you're a social butterfly and you love networking with people and you're great what at sales, <laughs> great, like go, go do that. You get it, you have a lot of friends, it's cool. <laughs> but if you like just being in your room on your computer, like one of these two set setups could be better. So, and, and also your other passions play into it. I love history. I love like physical old things. And the fact that we do solely collectibles, we do rare collectibles, primarily coins and currency. That's our niche. Numismatics is the field. We just love it. Like to think, to look at these coins, I've shown you guys, you guys are fascinated, like coins and bills from the 1700s, 1800s. Yeah. It's like who touched that stuff? So it's like super cool. Uh, again, when you love doing something, it doesn't feel like work. So we'll put in yeah, all this huge passion. I have we were, what were we at a restaurant, like buying a burrito a few months ago or something. Yeah. <laughs> I pull out a couple dollars or something. He's like, I'll give you $2 for that $1 bill. Right oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you had a rare <laughs> star note. Like I'm trying yeah. to teach these guys in our friend group. Definitely, people have become more aware of these rare coins and currency because I mean, I'm happy to share yeah, them to my quarters and yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, I'm always like looking through the change and stuff. And but it, but it pays off. Like speaking yeah. of margins, the margins we have on some of these things are insane. Like yeah. we were just uh, on a huge buying spree up in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho. Like just going to coin shops everywhere. And uh, the best stop we went to this coin shop, we dropped like two thousand dollars. It just so happens one of the bills that he sold me in this huge stack alone, this little $5 bill, is worth almost $2,000 wow. that I paid $8 for. Paid $8 for the bill. For the that's better than my row ass. Yeah, yeah. Wow. $8 <laughs> worth 2000 I think that's a pretty good return on your investment. So things like that. So that stop probably turned in like six or seven grand uh, off the 2K. So like we're talking 100, 200, 300, 400% margins with what we're doing. 
So yeah. super high margins, a ton of work, everything being shipped out physically, like just keeping up with it is a lot more work, but it pays off with the returns and the higher barriers to entry. Like I said, less competition. So pros and cons to everything, but let your passions play into what you do for sure. Yeah. And, and that'll kind of lead it. I want to I wanna say something to all the younger viewers out there that maybe haven't started a business yet or are trying to figure out which one of these is best. Okay. Yep. The number one thing that I want to kill off right now in this video is you guys that are out there trying to figure out which one of these things is easiest, oh, okay? Yeah. All of these business models and many others that we haven't discussed require a lot of time, investment up front. They all kind of require the same amount of grit and hustle in the beginning. 100%. And people don't see that. I mean, you see on social media the highlight reels of everyone. Yeah. Everything. My post, I mean, it looks great, but I mean, you guys both know this. I mean, I went to bed last night at 4 and I was up at 5.45 because we had to go somewhere. Yep. I'm barely Damn. awake right now. And I'm jumping in the pool which I don't get to spend as much time in as I would like to. Because you're on because this thing. I'm on that. Now, to a degree, I want to be on that, but in any business, no matter what you do, mm -hmm. there are things you will not want to do. But there's actually one reason, it's kind of a little off topic, I really like school for one specific reason. If, if you don't like it, and I, I hate it with a passion, still do, I'm not pro or anti-school, okay. but the, like the, the act of forcing yourself to do something you really don't want to do is discipline. Okay. And that builds a great That's skill fair. when it comes to business. Right. Very true. As simple as that. That's the one thing I really like about school. Very if true. you can force yourself to do it. I, I dropped out before that really came into a, yeah. a thing. But that's a big takeaway. Now this is easy. Huge. No, no other fields of entrepreneurship. There are very few things that just, oh, you can just have money roll in, you can do whatever you want, and you're rich within a, Don't a couple for weeks. Easy. Look, look for scalability. Look for, for systemization. You can learn most things for free on YouTube. There's some stuff like what we do with ads, you yes. will find all of it on YouTube. I post yes. a lot about it, but I'm not going to give away everything. Browse around if you're interested in something. I mean, there's, there's I mean, whatever, thousands of people out there in different spaces. There's a lot of free content. I mean, from random eBooks to courses to YouTube channels, PDFs, Wikipedia blogs. I mean, just yeah. read about it. Yep. See what you like doing. Our passion yeah. for cars led into our businesses. Our passion for coins and stuff led into business. Turn your passion into profit. There we go. It's a good Sweet. one. Well, guys, this video is getting up there in length. Don't want to take up too much of these guys' time. but uh, Spend the next 20 minutes going and looking into one thing that interests you. Right, go browse yes. around. Go, go or starting go. an eBay account. Yeah. Getting those feedbacks up, like <laughs> I said. Or looking in the shop fire. Or watching some of Finn's videos. Or watching some of Kieran's videos. Kieran's going hard on his channel recently, too. Maybe next time we check in in two years. I hope we get 150,000 subscribers, so. too. Is it going to take two years to film another video? I'm really hoping not two years. Hopefully, like two weeks, we'll have another one with these two. I, I think Sweet. this is good stuff. You guys like this well, uh, in the same good state. Dynamic. trio? All 19 year old. I just turned 20, but close enough. Um, we're all very young. We're all guys who like cars and we're all living in Arizona. There we go. That sounds like a recipe for a uh, disaster. But yeah, disaster. <laughs> that we'll see. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. You're not, you're not going to want to miss future content. Now that we're back off that long drought, um, we, we have some videos to make for you guys. I owe you guys. So uh, comment down below your favorite part and what you guys think about this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. See ya. Nice. That's, oh, that's oh. That was good. That was fire. And, all right, whenever you're ready.